It's time for new painting and it's time for reproduction. It's a work that is well known in Sweden. It's a Swedish painter, arguably the most well-known Swedish painter of all time. Certainly at his time, it was the well, most well-known artist, I would say. His name was Anders Sorn, and he lived at the end of the 19th century and the beginning of the 20th century. And he painted a lot of portraits of well-known people, but he also painted a lot of sceneries and specifically from Sweden. And the thing that I am going to take on is an example of that kind of scenery. It's called Midsummer Dance. And it's showing a Midsummer Dance. Uh, by the time I would, I, I haven't checked it out actually, but it's probably the end of the 19th century or beginning of the 20th century. If I say that, I, am, I don't say too much at least. So um, this painting is, um, I think it, the original is 150 centimeters in height. So I'm not going to paint it just as big. My painting will be 90 centimeters, so I find a good enough canvas for it and uh, I start to sketch on it. But uh, I have to crop a little bit in the bottom there, so uh, it's uh, not too bad. It will um, cut off a little bit of the skirt and a little bit of the grass in the bottom, but I don't think it really disturbs the, the whole impression of the painting anyway. So I'm going, go, I'm going ahead and do that anyway. It's time to start to paint. I have sketched it all on the canvas and uh, it looks, you know, it's hard to see the, see the sketching on this canvas because it's, uh, it's an old, uh, uh, old painting that I just painted over and it looks very strange maybe, but the reason it looks like this is because when I paint it, it always I always have uh, paint left when I'm done for the day, and you can't leave the paint out for too long because it will will um, dry out. So I turn it into one color and then I use it for to prepare another canvas. And if I have something old that I don't like, I want to paint over, then I use that color that it, the left leftovers and paint it all over and I've done that several times on this canvas so it's a bit different shades here of the color so that's why it looks like this and uh, I've I can still see the the sketches so I can follow the the original of Sorn here and now I am um, about to start to paint and I have a uh, the intention to use these colors that he uses in his paintings. I, I'm not sure how, in what extent he used other colors as well, but he is well known for the Sorn palette. And um, those colors that, uh, that is part of that is, uh, is black, it's yellow ochre, it's, uh, I think it's vermilion red, but I use cadmium red. And it's also, what didn't I say, it's uh, titanium white, of course. So what stands out with that palette is that there is no blue in, on the palette. And I played around with it a little bit and it's really interesting to see how the black and white blend together because it's gray, but the gray color really is bluish. It's metallic bluish really, so I will I see how I can use that. There are some parts I've talked about it. It's some some parts of the clothing on this canvas that I'm a little bit. I'm uh, I'm not sure if this will be enough for that, but uh, it's uh, it's going to take me a long way. I hope, and uh, I plan to to use that as much as I can, as as far as I can go with with this palette, and. Uh, I have uh, started to blend the, the colors a little bit. I start with the, with the darker areas, the, the black clothing of the, the dancers here. So I see the different shades there and I start to, to blend them. And I, I see that I can really find 
those those um, those colors in a way that I will will enjoy. I believe so. This is gonna be fun. It's very interesting to start to do something that you haven't really done. I like to get into new challenges and test new things. So this will be interesting to see how it turns out. Yes, I'm very curious to see how far I can take the painting with this limited palette. I start to work on the darker areas with the darker parts of the clothing. There's a lot of movement in this painting and it's not only that it's a dancing scene, you know, it's like a snapshot that you would take with a modern mobile phone. The way Zorn painted had a very direct and spontaneous feel about it. I don't concern myself too much with it yet. I merely try to get the colors right and I don't get into too much details at this stage. Actually, I started by only using one brush. It's a quite broad brush, so I can't handle too many details anyway. And I think it serves me well in the beginning since a lot of the parts in the painting are a bit blurry. It gives a feeling of movement, so by using this brush I couldn't go in and work with, the, with all the details, even though it sometimes is tempting to do that right away. I know that I will be able to fine tune details later, so I am patiently just filling the canvas with colors, one by one. The feeling right now is that the darker parts of the clothing and the logged wall and roof of the barn would, will work fine. The red house in the background is a problem though. I can't seem to get as much warm yellowish tone in the red color. As you can see, it doesn't really match the red in the original. You might think it's a minor thing, but I really want the warm feeling of the Swedish summer night. You can see that the sky in my painting is lacking yellowish tones as well. And you can also find that white yellow tone in the clothing, the white clothing of the dancers. So I'm afraid I'll need to adjust that later on. And uh, probably I'll have to add some cadmium yellow in the mix. I think so. Another reason why the red color is so important is that this painting is from Dalekarlia in Sweden. That's where Sorn lived. This, uh, these houses are all over Sweden, but they really stem from Dalekarlia. This red paint is called Fadu Rödfärg. The red pigment in the paint comes from the copper-rich soil in this area. There was a big copper mine that during the 17th century really financed Sweden's military during the Thirty Years' War. I digress. I try not to get into what I think about military expenses and the military industrial complex right now. Suffice to say that this color is really significant to the Swedish landscape. So I want to get that just right. Some colors to the palette is a grass. It turned out that the green, the strong green tones were really hard to, uh, to get right. Not because of uh, the the bluish, the lack of blue, which I was thinking in the beginning, but because of the lack of yellow. So it's the same color that I had to add for getting the color of the red house right and to get the warmth of the, the sky right as well. And uh, I needed really that yellow color to really turn up the temperature of the, of the green grass. I suspect that under Sorn, if he used this palette for this painting, I'm not sure really, but uh, I suspect he used a couple of other colors as well. But you should also take into consideration that the colors that I use aren't exactly the same that he uses, used. So for example, the yellow ochre that he used, I use like golden ochre and it's surely not the same brand as he used more than 100 years ago. So um, they will differ. And the, the ochre that I used wasn't that strong in the yellow. It was uh, very brownish. So I really needed some stronger yellow to, to get these tones out in the different parts of this painting.
now the painting is done, the work is completed, and I'm quite content. It's not exactly as the original, but my goal is not to make an exact copy. I want to make my own reproduction of it. And there are ways to do it that anyone can really follow. And uh, there are links below this video for, to online trainings and a free manual to check out if you're interested. So check out the links below and um, share and like the video and consider subscribing if you're interested in seeing the new and get notified when I upload new videos to this channel. So thank you for watching and see you in the next one.